As old school wrestling fans, we tend to look back at the mid 90s and put a lot of blame on Kevin Nash for things that went wrong. From the low attendance and buy rates of WWF shows during his title run, to the decline in WCW ratings during his time as Booker in the company. While Nash does deserve some criticism for his choices and actions during his wrestling career, fans should look at some of the reactions he got when he came to the ring and during his matches and you'll notice that arenas popped huge for Big Daddy Cool during his babyface run. It's undeniable that he was popular, but it's also undeniable that business was down. Kevin Nash has been stuck with a career narrative fans have given him through hindsight, driven on by bad perception. Some of this is justified, and some isn't. We remember him as a poison that ruined everything, and jokes about Nash tearing his quads just don't go away. But when we look into his career more in depth, Diesel was, at times, put in positions that nobody could save from being awful. At certain points, Diesel had to make do with the questionable opponents put in front of him as Vince McMahon thought that big guy versus big guy matches were still what fans wanted to see in 1994 and 1995. It wasn't. Before getting into the video, as we all know, Kevin Nash has conducted many shoot interviews and timeline videos where he talks in depth about his career and the politics he was involved in within wrestling. This video looks at his WWF runs and his biggest matches. Use this to supplement your viewing of Nash's shoot interviews as there isn't a lot of ground we can cover that Nash hasn't already talked about. That being said, this video is never going to change anyone's opinion of Kevin Nash. That damage is already done, but hopefully viewers get an understanding of Diesel's time in the WWF during the company's new generation era. People tend to forget that Diesel had some good matches in the WWF, and while they may have been against the same few people, these matches are definitely worth a second look. Diesel got his break in the WWF when he was noticed by Shawn Michaels. Michaels was looking to bring in a bodyguard heater. Shawn felt that his character could do with the assistance of a big man at ringside and WCW's Vinny Vegas was a great fit. Vinny Vegas had previously been one half of the Master Blasters tag team and he also worked as Oz along with a ridiculous outfit that had no chance of ever getting over. Soon, Nash was repackaged as the wisecracking Vinny Vegas and Shawn Michaels found the character funny. After a few phone calls, Nash told WCW that he wanted out of the wrestling business altogether and they released him from his contract. He would then instantly sign a WWF contract. Kevin Nash came into the WWF as Diesel, a name given to him by a young Shane McMahon. He wore all leather and portrayed a biker thug from the streets of Detroit. The name Diesel was a play on Nash being from Detroit, also known as Motor City. When he made his debut, his theme music was simply the sound of engines and loud horns, which I must admit, as a kid, sounded very intimidating and unsettling. Diesel became the bodyguard for Shawn Michaels and the pair became known as the Two Dudes with Attitudes. In his debut appearance, he helped Shawn Michaels win the Intercontinental title in a match against Marty Jannetty during a house show in June 1993. Diesel would spend the remainder of the year by Shawn Michaels' side, accompanying him to the ring and wrestling odd tag matches with the Heartbreak Kid. The Royal Rumble in 1994 was Diesel's coming out party. He eliminated seven men in the Royal Rumble match and got a good crowd reaction, which prompted Vince McMahon to see the dollar signs. In April the same year, Diesel won the Intercontinental Championship from Razor Ramon with an assist from Shawn Michaels during an episode of Superstars. He would also capture the tag titles with HBK when the Dudes with Attitudes defeated the Head Shrinkers days before SummerSlam in 1994. Diesel was beginning to get even bigger crowd reactions and the decision was soon made to turn Diesel babyface. At Summerslam in 1994, Diesel lost the Intercontinental title when Shawn Michaels cost him the match by accidentally super kicking him. History would repeat itself at the Survivor Series that year when Shawn again super kicked Diesel accidentally. When Diesel chased Michaels to the backstage area, the crowd erupted, effectively beginning his babyface turn. The two dudes with attitudes vacated the tag titles due to their differences, but mere days later, the Rockets were strapped to Diesel's back as he became the new WWF Champion. On November 26th, three days after Survivor Series, Diesel faced Bob Backlund for the WWF title he won at Survivor Series from Bret Hart. 
In the match, held at Madison Square Garden, Diesel defeated Backlund in an 8 second squash match. 8 seconds, just like that, Diesel had became the number one guy in the WWF. A few things about this match. The first thing is, from the footage we have been supplied by WWF, it seems the crowd reaction is fantastic here for Diesel. No matter what we may say about Kevin Nash and the long term decision to put the belt on him, he was really over in this moment with a typically difficult New York crowd. The other thing I need to mention here is, I wish they would have let this build go on longer for Diesel. It seemed like a knee jerk reaction to the popularity Nash had received when the two dudes with attitude split up. Diesel was just solidified as a baby face three days before. Maybe WWF should have tested the waters a bit more here, but it's irrelevant now anyway. Diesel was now the top guy in the company. So this was the start of the WWF title run that people like to point to and blame a lot of WWE's misfortunes on during 1995. To just get this out of the way, I try my best to keep these videos unbiased and generally I keep my opinion out because I can't please everyone. What I will say though is yes, there is no doubt that numbers were bad in 1995. I'll also say though that the champion shouldn't take the whole blame for the company's numbers being down. There's so much more to consider, such as opponent selection for the champion, correct promoting and concise booking leading up to the events, the undercard and midcard, just the whole product. If we as fans only cared about the WWF champion and were only paying to see the champion, why don't we show up to live events at the last half hour? We pay for the whole show to be entertained for a few hours, while the WWF Champion is indeed the face and flag bearer of the company, they aren't the end all and be all when it comes to profitability of the organisation. This is just my opinion though, so let's move on. Diesel promised Bret Hart a shot at the title due to how he lost the belt to Bob Backlund at the Survivor Series in 1994. At the 1995 Royal Rumble, Diesel and Bret Hart met in the ring and the match was decent. Hart could get a good match out of just about anyone during this period, so the decision to book Hart vs Diesel in Nash's first big title defence was a smart one. The match ended in a draw due to interference from several wrestlers, including Shawn Michaels. Michaels was angry that Diesel had beaten him to the WWF World Heavyweight Championship and was motivated enough to win the Royal Rumble match later that evening, earning himself a title shot at WrestleMania 11. Diesel vs Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 11 is an interesting affair. For more information about the match positioning on the card and WrestleMania 11's closing main event, check out my Bam Bam Bigelow video. Diesel vs Shawn Michaels would be in the semi main spot and it was eventful. We seem to learn more and more about this match though as the years went on. To kick things off, Diesel screws up his interview prior to the match with Todd Pettengill, stumbling his words while attempting to convince the audience that he would retain the belt. The fans would then cheer HBK during his entrance and boo Nice throughout the contest, especially when he wins. Sean also goes out of his way to show up Diesel in the ring, trying to make Diesel tired and essentially running rings around him. Nice even talks about this in a shoot interview, saying even though they were the best of friends, it didn't matter to Sean once the bell rang, it was all business and Sean was in the business of getting himself over, as everyone was back then. Basically HBK made it obvious during this match that Diesel couldn't keep up with him. Vince McMahon wanted Diesel to basically kick out a no sell Shawn Michaels super kick, leading to a clean win. However, Sean managed to manipulate the situation to make it look like a weak kickout and fans booed loudly and seemingly Shawn Michaels was turning face mid-match, so much so that the decision was made to turn Shawn Michaels into a full baby face the next night on Raw. For the record, Sean was reportedly pissed off backstage that Diesel was kicking out of his finish in the first place, however if you're going to do something like that, WrestleMania is definitely the place to do it. Sean either screws up or decides to purposely mess up Kevin Nash's jackknife powerbomb. It's probably the worst looking jackknife powerbomb you will ever see, with maybe the exception being when the giant took the move and landed on his neck. Sean takes the bump on his legs and ass, making the move look awkward. Nice believes HBK done this on purpose, and so do I. Who could rightfully believe that Shawn Michaels, one of the masters of selling and making people look good, couldn't take a powerbomb correctly? 
In the end, Diesel gets the win though. The title reign continues. Diesel comes to the aid of Shawn Michaels the next night on Raw and the two dudes with attitudes are reunited. We now have to look at Diesel's next opponents and get into the head of Vince McMahon. Diesel would be paired up against Psycho Sid for the first two In Your House pay-per-views and then against King Mabel at Summerslam in 1995. You can see the thought process here, it's all big guy versus big guy, which let's be honest, it never really works. This isn't to say Mabel and Sid are bad workers, it's saying that pairing Sid and Mabel with Diesel is going to result in a bad match. And that is unfortunately what happened. When Diesel was working against Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, these guys helped make Diesel look like a star. When Diesel had to work against bigger and less capable wrestlers, especially in big man matches, it was never going to be 5 star affairs. On September 24th at In Your House 3, the Dudes with Attitudes challenged the reigning WWF Tag Team Champions Owen Hart and Yokozuna. The match had a winner take all stipulation as in addition to the tag belts, Diesel's WWF Championship and Shawn Michaels recently won the IC Championship were also on the line. Diesel and Michaels won the match in the tag team belts but they had to return them the next day following some lobbying by Hart and Yokozuna's lawyer Clarence Mason. Diesel would go on to lose the WWF Championship at the 1995 Survivor Series in an excellent match against Bret Hart which was contested under no DQ rules. Diesel attacked Hart afterwards which began a tweener run for Kevin Nash. At the Royal Rumble then in 1996, Diesel cost Undertaker the WWF Championship, was the last man eliminated in the Royal Rumble match when his click buddy HBK eliminated him and he went on to lose a steel cage match against Bret Hart at In Your House 6 when the Undertaker got his revenge. Undertaker vs Diesel was now booked for WrestleMania 12. Shortly before the Undertaker match at WrestleMania 12, Diesel had a decision to make. His WWF contract was coming up and his friend Scott Hall had just signed a lucrative deal with WCW. Eric Bischoff offered Kevin Nash a 3 year guaranteed contract with a 1.2 million annual salary. Nash said to Vince McMahon that he did not want to leave the WWF, telling Vince that he had been the first to believe in him as a wrestler. Kevin Nash also said that if McMahon was willing to match the offer made by WCW, he would stay with the WWF. McMahon decided not to re-sign Diesel, saying he would have to offer matching contracts to other wrestlers and with the promotion in a bad financial situation at the time, he simply could not afford to. Nash then signed his WCW contract shortly thereafter and he was gearing up to leave the WWF and begin one of the biggest and most profitable storylines in wrestling history. Diesel lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania 12 on March 31st 1996, after which he finally turned heel and went on to feud with Shawn Michaels once again. In his last televised match, Diesel worked yet another great match with Shawn Michaels at In Your House, Good Friends, Better Enemies. This is an interesting match for sure. Diesel takes a lot of time to taunt Vince McMahon during the showdown, which seems odd, and after the bout, Fans who look closely will notice Shawn Michaels getting jabs into WCW and Hulk Hogan to the point where Shawn can be seen shouting, this is where the big boys play, huh? Take nothing away from the match itself though, it's a great no holds barred match that showed again that Diesel could be good when matched with the right opponent. Shawn wrestled with intensity on this night and it resulted in a great match. Kevin Nash went to WCW and found fortunes as a founding father of the New World Order. He was also involved in the booking committee and eventually he became the head booker for the company. We will look into Nash and WCW in another video, but for now, let's just say that Nash used his politicking experience with the clique in the WWF, along with his relationships in WCW, to make some decisions that fans still scratch their heads over today. But again, we will get to that in another video.